in different spiritual paths, there's a special idea related to becoming more aware and enlightened. This idea is like a hidden energy at the base of our spine, kind of like a coiled up snake. It's in everyone, but usually stays quiet. When it wakes up, it moves up our spine, giving us a burst of power that goes all the way to our brain's top. It's like a fresh start, bringing out a strong inner force. Some call this opening the third eye or activating the pineal gland. In older Indian practices, it's called Kundalini, which means coiled one. In a type of Christian thinking called Gnostic Christianity, it's about lifting up something called chrism, which is like a special fluid in our brains. In yoga, they sometimes talk about the spiritual spine. For some people, this knowledge has been kept deep within their religious practices. It's not something everyone gets to know, just a select few, hidden behind stories that seem like history. But if we look beyond the stories, there's a map in our minds that shows how to become more aware and enlightened. There are little signs along the way that help us figure out this path. Even in the Bible, there are hints, though most people think it's all about real historical events. If we're open to thinking about other ideas, there are some fascinating things to consider. This special secret tells us something amazing. The power of what we call Christ is inside each of us. And rather than a distant place we visit, the temple of God is actually our own body. This isn't just some wild idea. Even a book from 1920 called God Man, the Word Made Flesh by Dr. George W. Carey talks about this. He blends religion, astrology, anatomy, and chemistry and says that words like seed, word, and God all mean the same thing. They're all about the incredible creative stuff. That's the source of everything. It's what everything is made from and exists in. The Bible scriptures, allegories, and parables are the exclusive texts that provide insight into the divine message. A seed signifies the commencement, echoing the proclamation. In the beginning was the Word. This creative essence, embodied in Christ, resides within each individual. As the ancients have chronicled, there occurs a resurrection and rebirth of this Christ within every person at the appointed time. In the chapter titled The Antichrist from the book God-Man, Dr. Carey alludes to the Roman Emperor Constantine's manipulation of the Bible to conceal the truth about humanity. He contends that the early Christians, including the Essenes, comprehended and imparted the profound truth that Christ was a tangible substance, akin to an oil or ointment, primarily housed in the spinal cord and permeating all parts of the body. Every nerve, whether directly or indirectly connected, contributes to the extraordinary flow that emanates from the cerebral center, much like the river that flows from Eden's upper brain to nourish the garden. These adept early Christians recognized that the scriptures, whether in ancient Hebrew or Greek, were symbolic narratives, parables, or fables reflecting the intricately designed human body. They understood that the creative gray matter secreted from the cerebrum was the origin and catalyst for the physical manifestation known as man. They also saw the symbolism in the River Jordan representing the spinal cord and the Dead Sea representing the sacred plexus at the spinal column's base, marking the point where the Jordan, spinal cord, meets the Dead Sea. The crucifixion of the oil or ointment, they understood, meant not death, but rather an exponential increase in power, remaining in this state for two and a half days, equivalent to the moon's period in a zodiac sign. This transpires in the cerebellum's tomb, and on the third day, it ascends to the pineal gland, linking the cerebellum to the optic thalamus, often referred to as the central eye and the throne of God. This chamber, shaped by the cerebrum's curvature, is the highest point of the body, the sanctified dwelling place of the living God, a vital substance born of the breath of life bestowed upon humanity. Hence the Holy Spirit, or breath, finds its pinnacle in the pineal gland. Earlier in his book, Dr. Carey identifies the pineal gland in the Bible as Mount Pineal, where Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord. In Hebrew, this term signifies face of God, and indeed it is the face of God, with the apex of this gland representing the eye, located within the face. Furthermore, he expounds on this activation by stating that the fluid, akin to oil or marrow, 
which descends down the spinal cord, emanates from the upper brain, the creator or father, often referred to as the Most High. In physiological terms, it is known as ovum or generative seed, constituting the life essence that shapes the human form of mortal flesh. In the Greek, from which the New Testament was translated, this marrow is labeled as Christ, synonymous with oil. Through refinement, transmutation, and elevation, it becomes so intensely revitalized that it engenders the renewal of the body, triumphing over death, the ultimate adversary. How can one achieve elevation by raising up the Son of Man, described as the Seed, the Word, the Savior, or Christ? Within the spinal cord lies a substance akin to salt referenced in the Bible. The Savior is equated with the Seed, or Jesus. Both the salt and the Savior originate from a common source, the Father, located in the upper brain.